Hey, what's up, YouTube verse? So today I've got just a couple of different things I'm gonna be working on. I got a lot of pen orders that I'm still gonna be working on. I've got uh, the holidays wrapped up, and I'm gonna be doing some things um, for after the holidays orders that got put in. I've got some hopefully announcements to come out in the future. Possibly a uh, partnership with another company to put out some of their artwork on some uh, different pens and things. But today I'm going to be working on actually a birthday gift uh, for a, a little girl, a friend of ours. Uh, she's having a birthday party and she wants me to make her a jewelry box, which is going to be really fun. So I've cast up a blank and I'm going to be turning a jewelry box, but they want to have a hinged lid. And in order to have a hinged lid, you got to have a flat surface. So in order to do that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, do a testing. I've got just a piece of maple here. This was a uh, section out of a large wedge that was cut into a uh, maple tree um, that had been down in somebody's uh, yard. They had to take this big maple tree down, and it had this large burl section. They cut a wedge into it, and this is just a chunk out of that big wedge um, that doesn't have any of the burling in it, so I'm going to use it as a test block. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to first I'll turn this between centers and then I'll move it slightly off center, probably just like a half an inch or so, and then uh, turn it down just slightly so I just get a, uh, a rounding over on one face and then I'll go in and I'll cut off the top and then I'll drill out the inside with a Forstner bit and see what kind of effect that gives me. If it gives me, I wanted to have a thicker section on the back and then a thinner section to the front and then on the back I'll go and then I'll flatten off the back in order to give me room and a flat face to put those hinges on and then I will uh, put it back together and get it all done up nice and then sand those smooth polish that out but first I'm going to do this test block just to see how it goes. I've just marked out my center on both sides here so let's go ahead and mount this into the chuck Good solid mount on there. Let's get that turned up. Alright, well we're close. Had a lot of tear out on here. It's actually got some burling in there. Nice. Alright, go down a little further. Let's see, is that round? Yes, that's how far I need to go. Perfect. Clean that up with some sandpaper and then we will get this going. Alright, so I got that all sanded up to about 320 grit. And I've still got some scratches here. I'm not too worried about those. I found that I was actually, this was all end grain here and end grain on this side, the way that I had cut it. I, it was hard to tell once I got it down into different forms which was end grain, which wasn't, uh, with as light as this was and with all the bandsaw marks. But We'll live with that, and we'll deal with that, and uh, that's all right. I'm going to shorten this up because with how thin this is, this is going to be a kind of a funny-looking uh, jewelry box. So I'm going to shorten this up probably to about here. But at first, I need to do my offset. So I want to save this end. This end I have the most burling on, and you can actually see the burl comes all the way through the top there. So I've got to get rid of that spike hole, obviously. So I'm going to lose about to there. So I'm thinking I want to do my 10 probably right about there. I think that'll be good. I'm going to lose to here. If I do it, maybe I'll half this thing. Maybe I'll end up with two pieces. Yeah, I think I'll mark that right there. If I can figure out what I do with my pencil. Mark that there with my pencil. And then on this, we're going to offset this. I've got this burling here, and I want that 
to be my face. So I'm going to go toward that face on that line. And I have a line on the exact opposite side in the same spot because these were my, my center drawn lines. And in order to save that, you want to go toward it because then that's going to be your thinner section. This will be your fatter section uh, on the back side. I think that'll look good. Yeah, so let me grab a ruler here. I love these calipers because they do inches and decimals or you can do inches and fractions. So I want to go three eighths of an inch offset. Right there. That looks like a really large offset. Well, let's go. Let's go to a quarter. All right. I'm going to go toward my burl. there and right there all right so now I've marked my offset let's mount that back on the lathe we'll get that going and let's mark my line can't see my line while it's spinning. That should be good enough. I have this mounted in here. We don't want to fully round this out. I just want to round off one face and true it up on just the one face. So you can see right here what we've got going. We've got it just cutting just the one face. And I just want to just bring that down a little further and it's going to uh, just bring in that one side and uh, I'll probably do it until it gets to probably about this point here which will mean it will be on that point there and then we'll bring this out we will uh, work on making our lid and then uh, we'll get this going That's pretty close. A little further to go, but that's working pretty well, I think. So I've got more in on this side than I do on this side. So yeah, clean that up a little bit, and I think we're good. There. Yeah, I like where that's at. Alright, I'll get that cleaned up and then uh, see you guys back in a second. Okay, so I got one face all flattened off here and I was very careful to keep the line that we adjusted our offset on perpendicular to our flattened face. So I kept that perpendicular with that line and now uh, we're going to put it back on the lathe here and we are going to form our, our dome. We're going to form a top, form our lid. We'll cut off the lid, drill the hole, and we'll see if this works out. Yeah. 
you guys can't see it from that angle. Let me fix this for you. Got that face all cleaned up there, and now I'm just going to go ahead and round over. I just want to give it a slight doming uh, effect right here, and I got to be real careful of these edges because they are chipping out pretty bad. All right, got that all cleaned up. Sit it with my uh, my orbital sander, cleaned up that dome. That looks pretty good now. Now I just need to part it off. I think I'll part it off right about here, and then we will drill out the inside for our jewelry box. Alright, face is all sanded up. Now it's time to decide how big of a hole can we make in this jewelry box. Alright, so the biggest Forstner bit that I have is one and one half. And I can see here that I've got just a little bit of a lip left there. And plenty of flesh here on the face, but that's looking awfully thin there on the back. So I'm thinking... I'm going to go with one size down with my 1 and 3 8 inch Forstner bit. I'm going to start off with a smaller set. I'm going to start off with a 3 quarter inch Forstner and then we'll work our way up to the 1 and 3 8 Now I'll bring up my tool rest. I'll clean up the bottom a little bit because I've got a few little uh, gouges in there and I will uh, get that fixed. So I took my, my lid over, flattened off the base and got it all nice and smooth and now if we look here our lid fits nicely on top of our box. Very little seam line to that. Looks really good. Really happy with how that's turning out. You can actually see some of the uh, figuring actually lines up nicely there looks real cool so we are going to go ahead and part this off I've got to basically part it off directly against the face of my chuck exactly what I didn't want okay change of plan there we go. Right there. Oh gosh, that was looking good. But I messed it up. I got too close. Got caught in between and it gouged out the corners. So I will fix that up on the sander. We'll flatten this bottom off and then we'll throw on like a contrasting with like a walnut or something. It'll look real nice. Well, that's a wrap on that one for now. So I'm going to, uh, I'll revisit this one in the future. So this is what our box ended up looking like. So we've got, we've got our burl lid here, our burl on the front there, and then, of course, a hole that goes all the way through. But when I'm all done, this will have a hinge that goes up. And, you know, I talked about putting um, a contrasting wood on the bottom of this. But I think what I'm going to do is I'm just going to turn a plug and I'm just going to plug the bottom of this so it'll be flat on the inside I'll sand it flush here on the bottom and I'm just gonna leave it looking like that because I think that actually looks really good just like so it matches up nicely if I were to cut 
a uh, contrasting piece and then glue that to the bottom. Then I'll have to do all of this really fine finish sanding in order to flush that up to the entire piece. And I don't really feel like doing that. I think it'll be easier just to turn a plug that fits that jams in there, jam it on with some glue, and then just let it set and then sand the bottom flush. These things happen um, when you know it happened to me. I was really frustrated, and I, I had to step away actually, and I had to think about it. I was like, "Why am I so frustrated?" This was supposed to just be a test of concept um, because I've got another block, which I'll show you in a second, that I wanted to try this this um, idea that I had in my head. I wanted to try this out on, and the problem was I wasn't going to sand this project. I was going to rough cut it, drill it, and you know, cut it apart, drill it, and do all that stuff. And as I started cutting into it, I started seeing these sections of burl and all that stuff. I was like, okay, I'm going to sand this. I just want to see how this turns out. And it started looking like a finished piece. It started looking really nice. I started to be kind of proud of it. I started to take ownership of what was just an experiment. So when I messed it up, I took it personally, and I forgot this was an experiment. I just wanted to see how I could do this and and I, I accomplished that. Today was a win. I accomplished that. I figured out what not to do. I figured out what I needed to do. Um, I learned some processes along the way, some things that I need to watch for when I work on the actual project. And the actual project is right here. I've got this block. This is... Uh, Blue with angelite powder and some flash white, and then some white with flash white mixed into it. And then uh, it's got a block of wood actually right here on the top too. So I'm gonna be doing up this block in the exact same method that I tested out on this small piece of wood today. This was a proof of concept. I had an idea, I wanted to try it out, make sure it was gonna work the way that I was thinking, and it did. So I'm proud of that. I'm happy with it. I'm going to revisit this on another day. I'm going to turn it into a finished project and I'll put it up and I'll sell it because I'm actually pretty proud of it. It turned out really nice and it's going to be really nice and it'll be somebody's nice ring box because so, it's, it's about the perfect size to store a few rings and maybe some earrings and stuff in. So it's a nice little box. I'm proud of it and it's going to turn out nice when I'm all done. But in the meantime, I've got to get to this block because my deadline is coming up. So thank you so much for joining me out in the shop. I'm so glad that, you know, you guys see things don't always turn out the way that you plan. Sometimes you just got to walk away and rethink what you've got going on and kind of reassess things. Peter Brown just did a video about this exact same thing that happened to him when he was making up a wand that didn't turn out the way that he envisioned it and he had to keep stepping away from it. And these things happen out in the shop. It's good to be... In a, in a good headspace. If you're not in a good headspace, you gotta walk away. I did that, I reassessed things, and I decided I'm gonna change the way that things are going for this and uh, get to my actual project, which was the whole reason why I was turning that up. So, thank you guys so much again for joining me out here in the shop today. This is Tactical Painter and Suits Crafting Woodshop signing out. Be sure to like, share, and subscribe, and check out some of my other videos.